Good evening, friends. Thank you so much for coming to Christmas Eve service with Wesley. I'm Pastor Carleen, and I am so glad you are joining us for one of the most beloved services of the year. And even though we can't be gathered together, we are with one another in our hearts tonight. And if you have been lighting an Advent wreath at home, I invite you to begin this service with the four outer candles all lit and have something handy so that you can light the center Christ candle later on in the service. And for good measure, if you have a candle that you can hold, um, have that ready as well for, for later on. For now, I invite you to grab your hot chocolate and settle in and open your heart to welcome the Christ child in worship on this night. And as always, every time we worship, I invite you to join us in saying our statement of welcome. At Wesley, we believe that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. You are invited to worship, wonder, and discover God's grace with us, and, and to participate, participate fully in this community of faith. Whether you are young or old, single or married, gay or straight, straight full or empty, who you are, and where you are on life's journey matters to us. And you are welcome here or wherever you may be to, to seek with us the God who seeks. That's all. That's all. That's all.
The Birth of Jesus In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Quirinus was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registered, each in his own town. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth to the child. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And cut. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly 
there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors.
Jesus Christ was born for this. He hath opened heaven's door, and ye are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good evening, kids. Happy Christmas Eve. Um, today's the, the night. Tonight's the night. And um, uh, we're all going to wake up in the morning and it's going to be Christmas. Tonight we're going to sing with our candles, Silent Night, and we're going to remember the birth of Jesus. But I have something to tell you, something that might come as a surprise to you. Today, or Christmas Day, December 25th, not actually Jesus' birthday. Yeah, that's right not his birthday. Um, I know that this might, um, you know, be a complete devastation to many of you, but Jesus wasn't um, actually born on December 25th. We don't know exactly when Jesus was born at all. We know, we don't even know what year Jesus was born, let alone the date. We do know where he was born. We know that he was born in the city of Bethlehem in the area um, that is Israel and Judea. Uh, which is kind of in the Mediterranean. We know um, we know basically when he was born. The scriptures tell us that he was born kind of early in the morning or late, late at night. Um, we know the conditions that he was born into. We know that he was born to um, a poor laborer and his wife um, who, uh, who were traveling um, if from a very marginalized area of of is, uh, Israel to another poor area of Israel, we know that um, the political situation at the time was not very good. Um, they were um, completely marginalized, and um, they were living in an occupied area by the Romans, who were not even part of their culture or their ethnicity. Um, that they um, they were being brutalized and taken advantage of and um, forced to accommodate the broader culture that um, that was being um, sh uh, shared with them within um, the Roman context uh, by force. But we don't actually know when Jesus was born. We don't know the date. We don't know the year. Um, but in the wisdom of the early church, they decided to put the celebration of a birth that we don't know the date of on December 25th. December 25th is in the middle of winter. It's actually just four days after the beginning of winter. It's uh, four days after the longest night of the year. See, on December 21st, um, we celebrate winter solstice, which is the longest night of the year. And um, then just four days later, after that date, the days start getting longer again, and the nights start getting shorter. And it's in this, this turn from the darkest parts of the day, the year to the brighter parts of the year, which is summer, that we find the beginning of the journey and the personhood of Jesus celebrated. You see, in the situation that they found themselves in, and it's very interesting that it's in the situation that we find ourselves in today where things seem so dark and so bad that there's devastation around us, both economically, there's social upheaval and marginalization. There is um, a environmental devastation with wildfires and global warming. 
there's political devastation going on with people being angry at one another and upset about the the way things are going in in that Jesus was born and he was seen as a hope a light that that maybe just maybe God would become present in our situation and God would change the darkness towards light that the days that were dark would get shorter and the days that would bring more light or goodness or hope into this world will get longer and so we celebrate Jesus on a date that is not his birthday but we celebrate him on December 25th because it is important for us to remember that even in the darkness God can send us light. Merry Christmas to you guys. I love you. And remember that even in the darkness of COVID, even in the darkness of everything that you're going through, God is going to send light. And it begins today. Merry Christmas.
Our special offering on Christmas Eve is devoted to our friends in Burundi. Uh, we are so um, honored to devote our gifts this year uh, to some friends we've made through African Road. And this year we are continuing to sponsor a woman named Albertine who is in her third year of university. She is one of a small cohort of women who will be the first Batwa women in history to graduate from university. And the entirety of her schooling and fees and room and board and everything that it costs for her to go is just a little over $2,600 for the year. Additionally, we have an ongoing relationship with three Batwa villages in Burundi who have been on a journey of self-sustenance that has included the Identity Project, which I don't have time to talk about, but I encourage you um, to read about if you can. They've been learning to farm and to store crops. And this year, our friends have an opportunity uh, for free metal roofing of a new building. And we are, um, we've been asked to provide the uh, rest of the structure, a cost of about $900. Now, most of the Batwa live in grass huts, but their food needs to be stored more securely in order to last and sustain them throughout the year. So I just invite you, um, if you are able, I know it's been a hard year and not everyone can, uh, but for those of you who are able um, to pitch in uh, with this special offering for Albertine and our friends um, that we know through African Road, you can learn more about um, all the wonderful things that uh, African Road is doing um, on the ground um, through local people at africanroad.org. And to donate um, tonight for tonight's special offering, you can do that securely on our website, wesleyeugene.org. I want to thank you so much for your generosity and your caring um, and all of the goodness that you have shown this year. And now I just want to invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, tonight we celebrate um, the greatest gift ever given, and our hearts are, are open again to receive the light that you've sent to us in the form of your Son. And with gratitude, we bless all of the gifts uh, that we are able to give as well. We pray that they would be blessed, that they would be multiplied, that they would be used for so much goodness in this world, and that the gifts you've given us that we pass along would keep giving and giving and giving as your kingdom comes and your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. We love you. We thank you for everything. Amen.
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see the thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Well, it's a census year, and it's mandated that everyone gets counted, no matter how inconvenient or ill-timed such demand might be. So even though there's a plague and Mary is pregnant and they can't take public transportation, they pile all their essentials into the old Pinto, paint peeling around the edges, but otherwise fundamentally sound or at least running. And they hit the road and head for Joseph's hometown. 
Unfortunately, the pandemic has meant reduced capacity at motels. And when they get to town after a long, uncomfortable day of travel, there are no rooms available anywhere. Joseph arranges for some takeout honey barbecue wings, which Mary has been craving for the last couple hours on the road, and which she dips generously into the extra sauce before pausing suddenly and letting out a small gasp. It's time, Joseph, she says, eyes widening with the realization that she will have to deliver a baby when the only hospital for miles is full to capacity with COVID patients. Mary focuses on contractions while Joseph tries to problem solve. It's not a real big town. He's already checked the motels. He circles the parking lot of the one shopping center, which feels exposed, acres of empty concrete under glaring lights. Mary makes it clear that room or no room, the baby is coming. Pulling up to the front entrance of his last hope, a large multi-story hotel in the center of town, Joseph leaves the pinto idling in the valet spot and attempts to plead with the front desk employee. My fiance is in labor. Please, can we get a room? Any room? We have no vacancy, sir, the man said, his eyes narrowing slightly with a glance toward Joseph's aging pinto, which contrasted starkly with the opulence of the hotel lobby. Maybe you should get her to a doctor instead. Good night. The last words rang with a note of finality that echoed in Joseph's ears as he retreated to the car, where Mary's labor was definitely progressing. Joseph pulled into the parking garage adjacent to the hotel and drove to the roof level, parking the creaking pinto in a corner, semi-secluded by the entrance to the stairwell. Above them was a starry, clear sky. The hotel sign cast an oddly comforting halo over the little car. In the back seat of that old sedan, Mary labored until finally, in the wee small hours of the morning, onto us, a child was born. Mary wrapped the baby in clothes from her bag and laid him gently in the open glove box. Joseph beamed with relief and joy Mary's eyes closed in exhausted but contented sleep. Meanwhile, just outside the town, some agricultural workers had risen in the night to get a start on their harvest day. Though still dark, they grabbed buckets and took to the rows, focused on their labor. Suddenly, an angel appeared above them, shining brightly in the pre-dawn sky. Hey there, I've got great news for you. Ah! The workers cried out in terror. Don't be afraid, I'm an angel. It's 2020, one of them retorted. How are we supposed to know this isn't an alien abduction? Fair point, responded the angel. I know things have been terrible and dark and every day is a new sorrow, but not today. Today I have the very best news and I've come to share it with you, the most essential workers. First, today, the savior of the world has been born. The one who you've been hoping for and waiting for for such a long time has arrived. The one who will bring equity and liberation and freedom and salvation to all of humanity. This is how you know he's the one. You will find the baby wrapped in clean clothes, lying in a glove box, in the parking garage on 4th Avenue. And suddenly, the angel was joined by an entire Christmas choir of angels who started to sing, Glory to God in the heavens and on earth, peace on whom his favor rests. Ah! cried one of the workers. You're not wearing masks, and singing is one of the worst things for spreading the virus. Calm down. You're not going to get the Rona from the heavenly hosts, said another. Let's go find this baby. Then we'll know if we've really been visited by God today. Leaving the fields and filled with amazement and wonder, they hopped into their vehicles, forming a caravan into town. It didn't take them long before they drove up to the small sedan on the corner of the roof of the 4th Avenue parking garage, partially hidden by the stairwell and glowing in the fluorescent light of the hotel sign. 
Approaching slowly and feeling suddenly self-conscious, the closest called out through her open car window. Is anyone there? A sleepy-eyed Joseph first cracked the driver's door and looked at them with a question on his face. Hey there, sorry to bother you. Um, this sounds crazy, but we saw some angels and, well, do you have a baby in there? Joseph's face broke into a sleepy smile. That doesn't sound crazy. It happened to me too. Mary, we have guests. One second. Joseph donned his masks while the workers hopped out of their vehicles and remained a safe distance away, holding up cardboard signs with happy birthday written across them. I'm glad I didn't write a name on this sign, whispered one of them to the person beside him. This is the fourth birthday parade it's been used for this year. The woman, who had been reclining in the passenger seat, slowly sat forward and opened her car door. There, just as they had been told, was the newborn baby, snuggled tightly in a Jerusalem U sweatshirt, sleeping soundly in the open glove box, which made a surprisingly cozy bassinet. In that moment, the workers knew that what the angels had told them was true, and they were filled with joy and gratitude. The light of the world had come. The savior of all people was born. And God told us. Pulling out phones, they immediately started texting everyone they knew. One, unfortunately, posting a pic of Joseph and Mary's car online as evidence. Many people wouldn't believe it anyway and would disregard the whole thing as a hoax, but it would be shared and shared anyway, circulated online with hashtag savior and hashtag angel sighting. Mary, for her part, couldn't stop thinking about all that had happened to her, marveling at all the characters and her story and the tender, vulnerable little baby entrusted to her care. What a crazy year this has been. But the essential workers weren't the only ones drawn to visit this incredible baby. Many months later, Mary heard a knock on their apartment door and, expecting a delivery, was surprised instead to see three distinguished figures in gilded masks on her doorstep. Are you the same Mary as this picture? The first visitor held up his phone to reveal an Instagram post taken that night of the Pinto in the parking garage. Yes, that's me, said Mary, but who are you? Mark Zuckerberg. You are the most liked photo on my social media empire. I thought I'd bring you a gift. Here, this is for you. He produced a Costco-sized package of toilet paper, his designer mask concealing a self-satisfied half grin. Um, thank you, said Mary. The second visitor broke in. And I'm Jeff Bezos, but you probably already knew that. I've made more money on this kid's birthday than you can imagine in a thousand lifetimes, so I thought I'd drop off a little token of my appreciation. Here you go. The second visitor produced a container of disinfectant wipes. They smell like incense, he said as Mary's eyebrows rose higher on her forehead. She nodded and then looked at the third visitor, who finally spoke. Oh, those guys, she said, laughing and rolling her twinkling eyes. Mary, honey, my name is Dolly Parton, and I brought you and your family a vaccine. Well, everyone's families, actually, but I just wanted to drop by and tell you, I listened to your song, The Magnificat, and from one songwriter to another, I have to say your words are life-changing. It is time for the arrogant and the powerful to be brought down low and for every hardworking, humble soul struggling on the margins to be raised up in their lives filled with good things. At that moment, a toddler appeared beside Mary, grabbing at her yoga pants to pull himself up to a standing position. He gazed upward with dark brown eyes straight into the eyes of his visitors, and they were pierced to the heart. Each of them were suddenly compelled to kneel. Aware in that moment of the inadequacy of what they had felt was their own greatness. Trembling with awe and a little fear at what lay behind the purity of that child's gaze. One by one, they paid their respects and slipped away 
Zuckerberg quickly deleting the selfie he had taken in front of the apartment without posting it online. Oh, I almost forgot, Dolly said, pulling a basket out of nowhere. This is for you, Mama. You have a very Merry Christmas. And before Mary could say thank you, she was gone. Mary looked down in wonder at the package. Full of fresh diapers, gift cards for takeout meals, a pound of coffee, scented candles, an electric back massager, and a 2017 King Estate Pinot Noir. Well, Jesus, she said, smiling down at her son. At least one of them was wise. Friends, there really aren't words that can hold what all of us have been through this year. There are not words for this Christmas Eve. And this night is a tender, tender moment. This night is full of memories and unlike any year we've ever had in the past. But, um, you know, in spite of it all, nothing can stop the light of Christ from shining in the darkness tonight. The candle will light in a few moments is the light of hope. It's the light of peace. It's the light of good news and great joy. It is the light of justice. It is the light of the powerful being brought low and the humble being raised up. It is the light of God's mercy and God's grace. It is the light of Christ, whose willingness to be born human in the most humble circumstances reveals God's love for all people, God's special identification with those on the margins, and calls us to humble ourselves and live as Christ called us to live. So may this holy story speak in a new way tonight. May it speak anew to you and to me. And may this light of Christ shine anew in each one of us and in all of us. Amen.
And now friends, the moment has come. This is what we look forward to all of Advent. And now this is the time. I invite you, if you're lighting a candle at home, this is the moment when we will light our Christ candle together. Please join me now. The light of Christ shines in the darkness. A savior has been born to us on this dark night. Let it shine in our hearts as well. Now I invite you, if you have a candle to hold, to go ahead and light it as well. And all together, wherever we are, Let's sing together, Silent.
curse is found, for as the curse is found. Glory to God in the highest and peace to you on whom God's favor rests. The light of Christ shines in the darkness. May it shine in your heart and your life this night and every night to come. Merry Christmas. Go in peace. Amen.